We're starting off the list with practical life activities and a classic one to introduce around now is dressing frames, a way for your child to practice those isolated motions that they need to dress and undress themselves. Now, we personally have been doing laundry together with Stella for a very long time at this point, so she's pretty much a pro at it. If you still haven't introduced any of the basic tasks or chores around the house with your little one, now is definitely a wonderful time to go ahead and get started. You'd be surprised at how wonderful this is for not only their fine motor skills, their gross motor skills, their problem solving, they're incredibly careful with what they do, and they're also really great at picking up on the sequencing. Window washing is a favorite with just about every child and it will remain a favorite for years to come. And this is a great way for them to get their hands to be much stronger as they figure out how to work that spray bottle. They're really motivated because they love to see the water come out. This is a wonderful way for them to also explore playing with water. So a different version of a sensory play as they're seeing what it's like to touch a glass that is dry as well as a glass that's wet and how slippery it gets. Now the squeegee is the next step and while Stella has not yet fully figured out how to work it, she has figured out that that is the next step up in this activity and that's also a very important part of this activity and the next step after that is to grab a little towel and dry off the window now if you've got water in the bottle you can add a little bit of vinegar in there if you're being very diligent about observing your little one and that way the windows will actually get cleaner if you don't have a big window to clean you can actually have them clean something like a little mirror or any other kind of glass or even clear plastic that you've got on something like a plate kitchen just any place where they can see the water splashing and imitate kind of window washing hand washing is another wonderful and simple activity that you can introduce to your child and have them take a lot more independence with it at this age especially during today's climate it's definitely an important skill for them to be learning moving right into making smoothies or any kind of little snack prep that your child enjoys kids are loving to imitate what we do at this age so they're loving to imitate us cooking this is also a lot of problem solving and again sequencing a lot of fine motor gross motor skills a lot of balancing and a lot a lot of problem solving again as they try to figure out which utensils they need to use what goes first what goes next and if you've got a picky eater this is a great way for them to get more more acclimated to eating other kinds of foods so spinach can be a difficult one for some kids but when they get to play with spinach and play with the water to rinse it off and after they've spent all that time working with this food they're a lot more interested in trying what they've made and they're a lot more likely to actually enjoy it or at least not be completely turned off by it now I do help Stella pour the milk into the smoothie simply because we're still using some of the leftover express milk I've got so I am trying to be as careful as we can with that milk but if you're buying store-bought milk definitely let your little one have more independence with practicing pouring that milk in themselves as well and I've noticed when we make the smoothie together instead of me just making it for Stella she definitely drinks a lot more of it and she's a lot happier now dishwashing is another favorite activity at this age because again they're imitating what we're doing it's also giving your child that final step of full independence of their eating routine so from hand washing all the way through preparing some kind of snack to cleaning up the dishes at the very end you don't need this kind of functional kitchen for this to work you can set up two bins one will be with soapy water one will be with water that you can rinse the dishes off in give your child some kind of plate and a little brush and have at it and I did just just want to remind you of flower arranging from our fall activities video because this is still a wonderful activity to do regardless of whether you have a boy or a girl they love flower arranging and it's a wonderful activity to introduce other type of practical life activities include working on specific tasks so pouring is a huge one because a lot of what we're doing in practical life activities does include pouring so we start off with dry pouring because pouring something like dried beans is a lot easier for the child to see and control and understand what's happening when they spill versus when we're pouring water this is the next step because it's more difficult to see and it's more difficult to control and you may notice that your child is starting to pour a lot more throughout the day or during bath time so definitely offer some kind of chance for them to practice pouring at this age it's actually a lot easier for them to pour with just two regular cups as opposed to these little pitchers because they don't have to worry about where they're placing their hands so this is kind of the next level so if your little one is struggling with pouring from pitcher to pitcher try offering just two cups without any kind of handles and see if that works better for them also offer a little sponge that they can use to independently soak up that extra water that they spill and squeeze back into their little cup or pitcher and continue the activity endlessly. The next activity we've got is transferring. So we can start out with just hand transferring so the child can understand that they're moving things from one container into the other. Eventually we can give them something like a spoon which is quite easy to manipulate and then we move on to these little scoops. So I've just got a quarter of a teaspoon here it looks like and the challenge with using this kind of little scoop as opposed to a spoon is the child actually needs to flick their wrist around a lot more in order to get the beans to fall out. So with a spoon even the slightest movement will get the beans to slide off but with the scoop it needs to be a very intentional movement of the wrist which is actually very difficult for the child to control. So make sure you are definitely using a bowl because the sides of the bowl make it a lot easier for them to successfully scoop up some of the beans. And when you're showing the child how to do this activity for the first time, it's best to over-exaggerate how much you're moving your wrist so they can really understand that that's what they need to be focusing on. Our next activity is actually an introduction to sewing. So this little sewing block is one I got a lot of questions on and I don't actually think they make it anymore. This is from Montessori Services. 
is and I haven't been able to find an actual listing for this item on their website anymore so I'll link similar items down below but this is an amazing way for the child to again work on their pincer grasp and work on their full hand grasp as well also a lot of small movement a lot of posting practice and a lot of problem solving a lot of patience as the child has to really get very intentional with how they're placing that little wooden needle into the little holes but if you carefully observe how the child has to grab that little needle it's actually very very beginning stages of practice for writing and we are still continuing to do a lot of posting at this age so any activity that we have been working on for the past several months like in the 12 to 13 month video that i've got are still going to be relevant at this age the child is simply continuing to perfect what they're working on and we simply continue to present them with different variations of a similar activity so they can work on it in different ways so i've got a posting into a more of a shallow hole versus posting with this pop-up toy Eventually, we're also going to move on to some of the color matching activities with this. Don't put away any of your posting activities just yet. There's definitely a lot more that we're going to be doing with them. A variation of posting that we do introduce around this age is these pegs in holes. So a lot of times these are more of the foam boards. The one that I've got here is actually a lot better because it's a sturdier foam. But again, this is an older material that got passed down to us and I have not been able to find this kind of very rigid foam. I will link the most similar items that I find again down below. But this is a great way to continue practicing posting and the child now has to be a lot more precise and refined with how they're trying to get those little pegs into the smaller holes. They're also working on building towers up. I like these versions of the pegs more than the little mushroom shaped ones because you'll notice Stella figured out that she can put her index finger into the hole and build the tower up that way. So that's allowed her to get a lot more comfortable with the grip and getting these pegs in We can also work again on color matching Eventually we can work on making patterns and introducing different concepts like more and less than and making these towers extra high is very encouraging and very interesting for the child. And again, you'll notice Stella is taking out our little book because I have been showing her different color matching with that activity. Moving on to color matching. Now, every child is going to be different. Around 18 months is actually when we can expect the child to definitely understand colors. But I've been introducing this activity for a while to Stella to kind of gauge when she actually gets it. And I noticed that this past month, she finally did understand matching. You'll notice she's constantly self-correcting with this activity, putting the discs on the dowels and then taking them off because they're not the same color and then moving them into the properly colored dowels so i do encourage you to allow your child any kind of chance to explore color matching so that you can gauge when it is that it finally clicks for them and continue to support them in that way if you're going to be using this kind of activity specifically so the discs on the dowels for color matching I encourage you to make sure that the child is very comfortable with just putting the discs on the dowel and that's not going to be preventing them or impeding them from getting to the color matching portion of the activity if they're still not comfortable actually getting discs onto a dowel. So make sure they perfect that skill first before we move on to the next step. This is an opening and closing tray activity and this is one that you can easily DIY and kids absolutely love this for ages and ages to come. I started this back when Stella was 9 to 10 months and she started first showing an interest in opening containers and at that point I just had easy ones for her to twist open and close. At this point, you see I've got a little glass bottle that has a little cork on top. I still have some of those containers that do need to be twisted open and closed. Got a little coin purse. I've got a larger box for her to open. I've got a little drawstring bag as well because that adds more texture. And for a lot of these, I tried to hide a little treasure for her to find inside. So inside this uh, bigger box, for example, when she opens it, she's got little pieces from one of her plain activities. Inside the glass bottle, I've just cut up some straws. So she works on posting them back in. And then inside the coin purse, I've got some circular coins that I had laminated myself that we were working on the coin drop box that I DIY'd as well. So that way she's more motivated to open and close these because she's taking things in and out as well. Next we're moving on to puzzles and we're still sticking with geometric shapes for us personally but you can definitely try to introduce some of the more organic shapes so something like animals or fruits and veggies. At this point every child will be different in what they're comfortable with. My big tip here is just to make sure that when the child takes the pieces out the picture under it is still the exact same picture of what the puzzle piece is as opposed to just being completely blank because that's going to really help them be successful in getting the right item into the right spot. Moving on to a different kind of shape matching, we're still working with shape sorters and specifically shape sorters with pounding. So shape sorters definitely don't put those away just yet because they're still perfecting that skill. But this one is a combination of a shape sorter and a pounding toy, so that's working on their hand strength. We've also got just the classic pounding toys, so this one is just a little hammer with a ball. This is such a great way for them to not only work on their coordination because they have to be careful to actually slam the hammer into the ball and not somewhere else. It also allows 
allows them to really practice their strength and exert maximum effort. And if you see your little ones got a little bit too much energy, this is a great activity to redirect them to. Now, I hope you've still got your little nesting stacking cups because your child is going to be a lot more interested in independently stacking and nesting the cups. So if you put them away, definitely take them back out and see what your child does with them because at this point, they're going to be not only building little towers with blocks, but also trying to figure out how they can properly stack the little cups to make that little perfect tower. And they're also working on size differentiation because when nesting the cups, there's really only one right way for the child to nest all the cups in order to get them all to fit one inside the other. And that's a wonderful skill to be working on at this age as well. Next, we've got the one-to-one -one correspondence activity that I had in my fall activities video because this is such a wonderful way to get at those basic, basic mathematical skills. You can either use a smaller item and an egg crate, or eventually I also found this bigger crate that we had and let's sell a play with some balls, putting one ball into one spot and just giving them different items to work with keeps the activity more fun. I hope it comes as no surprise to anyone that we still have the familiar faces cards out, but at this point we're working on matching and I knew that Stella was finally ready for this when she started bringing me the cards of the person that we were FaceTiming at the time. And so I just lay out all the cards in a line and I give her the other card to match. This age, the classic way to match is an item to a picture card and it's best for the picture to be of the exact item and the exact size. That way when the child places the item on the picture, they're covering the picture perfectly and they can be sure that they made the exact right match. You've likely seen this barn activity in several of my previous videos, but it has become such a staple in our household and latches are definitely a wonderful thing to be introducing at this age as well. It's working on a lot of the fine motor skills. It's working on a lot of problem solving, a lot of patience. And because this one specifically is a barn with a lot of little animals inside, we're working on a lot of language opportunities and a lot of matching here as well, because we've got two sets of animals that go in there now. There's different variations of latch activities. There's different puzzles where you can buy different boxes, but I found that this barn latch activity is absolutely amazing, specifically because it does allow for a lot more of open-ended play, a lot of pretend play, and a lot of language opportunities as well. Speaking of language, at this point, you may be able to start asking your child what an animal is or what sound they make by pointing to a picture of it. Ga ga ga. Ga ga ga, goose. Ga ga ga, ga ga And this is also the age when they'll be able to imitate motions for specific nursery rhymes that have associated motions with them. Look! Inagoyu top! Bolshe ya ni and don't forget to allow your child to have access to different ways for them to explore music, musical instruments, rhythm, movement, dancing, as well as different art activities such as working with crayon because that's a wonderful way for them to gain that hand strength and get ready for writing. I also encourage you not to shy away from things like paint. I've got watercolor paint for Stella here and there's a lot of sequencing that she has to figure out. Putting the paintbrush, which I recommend using a much thicker one than the one here, putting that paintbrush into the water, dipping it back into the paint and then putting that onto the paper for her to actually see a result. So it's not just a sensory exploration, it's not just art, it's also, again, working on those first mathematical and scientific explorations. As for gross motor skills, you may notice your child entering the transporting schema where they're putting everything together into one container or onto a chair here and moving it from room to room. They may also be trying to put a lot of items into their hands at once and moving them from room to room. So definitely make sure you're setting up a space that supports that. So because moving things around on a chair like this, while extremely precious and cute and a lot of problem solving to make it all stay, still a bit too dangerous for my comfort level. So I still have that little wagon that Stella used to learn how to walk. And then I encourage you to put everything into that little wagon so she can transport it safely from room to room. Another wonderful way to explore the transporting and the trajectory schema is to set up this kind of little pinball style obstacle course ball run. We're using some blocks on our nugget, but you can also glue some paper towel rolls to a cardboard box and just plop that up against your couch. And not only is the child able to freely throw balls around and get that energy out, they can also see the cause and effect and what happens to the path of that ball when there's something in its way. So I hope you enjoyed some of these activities and until next time, I hope you stay safe.